which we were eager to learn beforehand and Lord really uh, blessed us through Bishop. Uh, in particular, one thing which I unlearned was two prayers that God will never answer. <laughs> one which God has already done, He will not once again do it. And uh, second thing, what God has told you to do, uh, you, have, you don't have to do it in your strength. He will give you that ability to complete it. For a long time, we have been waiting for this kind of powerful ministry and preaching in Delhi. We have been praying for somebody, servant of God, to come and again teach us how to draw out the power that is already in us. I am so happy today that Bishop has once again made us realize that Jesus Christ is in us in the fullness of Godhead. And when we know that and preach the gospel, then there will be power. And he will take, healing will take place. And this is the message that Delhi needs. This is the message that India needs. Thank you, sir. And this is the need of the hour. We are requesting the people of God in UK to kindly send Bishop and the team and Madam also. Ruth. Ruth, Madam Ruth also to Delhi. Uh, overall, if you review the, this coming, I think it was God time, God's time that he came here. And Bishop did not come alone. Jesus, that is, as he says, is me, came with him. And as the Bishop says, it is he who does it, not I. So I praise God that something has happened. I would say that he came, he spoke, he conquered. That's it. When they returned from India, several of the crew shared their experiences with the Panal Church congregation. It's always a pleasure to go on a trip uh, with the Bishop. Uh, you really see him um, f just firing on all cylinders and it's great to see him speaking to people who have never heard him before. Um, you get to see them going from, from nothing, going from their old teaching to suddenly seeing the simplicity of the gospel as the bishop preaches it um, and the freedom and liberty. And you just, you see them, uh, the first day in Nagpur they seem to be a little bit um, almost in stunned silence, or they were quite quiet. By the second day, they were giving him a standing ovation. And um, as we interviewed everyone afterwards, they were just blown away by the simplicity um, that the bishop was, preach was preaching. The, the other thing that really struck me was um, GGF, actually. Um, the entire trip was, um, was really caused by um, a, a single chap attending a GGF conference, I think two years ago or so, and he was so amazed by GGF, by the bishop's preaching, that he thought, I have to take this to the pastors back home who can't come to England. And so he strived for two years to build, to organize and build this trip. And, and so, in England, when we have GGF, all we see is the tip of the iceberg. We see, just, we see these pastors come over, we talk to them, and we eat with them. But we don't really see what happens. You know, we don't see the impact on their life, and then how that gets magnified into hundreds of lives, and then how that gets magnified further. And it reaches thousands and thousands of people. And you don't realize, just from one person visiting England, the impact that that can have. So that really reinforced to me the importance of GGF and, and attending it, speaking to the pastors and just the, the whole thing, the, the whole um, idea that GGF is. And it truly is a, a global gospel. What really hit me was um, the preaching on, on fasting. And I'd always believed what Bishop Reed said that you know, fasting is, uh, we don't need to fast because it's all what God has done not what we're doing. Um, and I really saw just how he presented that to people in India. And I thought, you know, that a lot of them live in poverty. Why, why would people fast over there? They, I mean, surely it, they struggle to eat as it is. Um, they're not going to try and, and not eat. Um, but actually, everyone gets taught to fast. Fasting is the way. And um, it, it just really clicked with me why it is. It's just because people are straining and, and they, they're under guilt. And we saw that so much on the first day 
um, there were two days in Nagpur, and the first day everyone was so quiet and Bishop Reed, I think he broke them in gently actually, he got up in the morning and um, he was just telling his testimony and everyone was so quiet and there were a few polite claps and then in the afternoon he was, and this and that and no fasting and that and um, the, <laughs> the interpreter, bless him, was doing exactly the same actions. <laughs> It's a really different culture. Um, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before going to India. Um, when we walked into the conference hall on the first day in Nagpur, the pastor's conference, we walked down the steps to the, to the stage. This was before Bishop Reed and Ruth got to the, to the meeting. And it was so different. Everyone was dressed so unbelievably colourfully. And the music, I don't know if you've ever heard an Indian sitar, and they play notes which you don't get in the rest or something, and it just sounded so very different. And it was at that point, this was about two days into it, that I suddenly realized we were in a completely different place. <laughs> completely different. <laughs> a completely different culture. <laughs> but then, what struck me was that the problems the people face and the bad teaching that they get are exactly the same. I saw it in Nigeria, we see it here, and we saw it in India. They all get taught stuff like that the way to God is through fasting and that you can, you know, you have to plead with God and that he's an angry God and you've got to appease him in some way. And I think in India in particular, they bring a lot of their uh, hin uh, Hindu baggage with them. And Bishop Reed just told them the truth. He told them that it's in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I don't know if you saw on the video the chap that was following Bishop Reed, a fantastic guy called Alok. He was such a good translator. He really transmitted the bishop's message with life. And he clicked, because I spoke to him afterwards. In, uh, it was I that did the interview with him. And I said, you had a moment when you realized what was going on, didn't you? And he said, yes. This is a guy who translates for big American preachers. And so he'd been heard, he'd heard preaching for years and years. And the bishop's message suddenly got to him and he said, yes, now I understand. It's not in the scripture which attests to God, it's, it or attests to Christ, it's Christ in me. And it was like a light switch had gone on for him and it was just fantastic to see that. And as Joseph said, on the second day, it was very, very moving when... He, Bishop Reed was on the platform and somebody said, right, and now Bishop Reed's going to speak. And before he could say anything, they all just stood up and started clapping and cheering. And this was on the second day. And what's significant about that is on the first day, they were taught everything. They had the full gospel, both barrels, no compromise. Everything that we hear here, day in, day out, over maybe a period of a few months, they got it in one day. And it blew their minds, quite obviously, and I guess they were thinking about it overnight. And their reaction on the next day when they finally realized was just amazing to see. And we did see some fantastic miracles, like that kickboxer you saw him on the video. He nearly kicked Bishop Reed, I think, at these demonstrations. And the lady who had her sight restored, there was a woman who was healed of spondylitis, the little baby in Delhi who, who had club foot. If you do get an opportunity to go on a mission trip, do it, because it does change your life. <laughs>